Acids and bases are everywhere, right? Yeah. You have the extreme cases like Drano, right? To dissolve hair in tubes. But, I mean, especially those acids. I mean, they're a lot of flavorings. It goes on in your stomach, vitamins. So, that doesn't work again. Okay. So, we are since they are everywhere, we're going to need exact really three theories to cover all these different acids and bases. And the first one we're going to talk about is Arrhenius. And I thought this guy was interesting. He, at the age of three, he taught himself to read. And then when, he's trying, when he went to graduate school, right, to get, his, get a doctorate, he, you know, he had to do dissertation, and he got the, a D on it. So not very good. And hard time, I assume, to get a job and things. But dang, the guy was right. So, notice here's his, he's right here. He's the first guy we're going to talk about. But you have a, when we think of an acid or a base, when we think of a base, what do you think of? What needs to be in that base? OH, OH right? When you, th when you think of an acid, what did you think of? H pluses. OK. And then you have stuff like this. How does this fit in the picture, right? Or how does, if you don't have any H's around at all, that's what aproteic means, there's no hydrogens anywhere. You can have acidic properties. So how do you explain this stuff? So that's why we're kind of going on three theories here. And you kind of pick the one that works to explain the situation you're in. But in all of them, if you keep this in, your, in mind, Acids H plus, base OH minus. Because an acid, it has to fit. All three theories. H plus is an acid. Or a base is a hydroxide. It has to fit no matter what the theory is. So let's just see if we can talk about this here. Arrhenius. When an acid is placed in water, it produces, what would you say? Uh, Vivian, what would you say? Well, remember acids and think of acids and H plus. So if it's going to be an acid, put it in water. It's going to produce a lot of H pluses. Right. So just kind of think of keep this in the back of your mind. These two. When a Arrhenius said when a base is put in water, it's going to produce a lot of what, Sabina? OH minuses. Okay. Now, this is where it's going to get kind of odd, Monica, but it still works. An acid, now think of an acid. This is what I picture. H plus. Is a species that accepts or donates electrons and forming a covalent bond. What can H plus do? H plus can only accept electrons. I already gave them up, right? So that's how I kind of remember this, keep them straight. A base, Gabby, think of OH minus, is a species that accepts or donates electrons when forming a covalent bond. Donates, hydroxide, negative. Yep. What's up, Daisy? Since I, I'm not going to be in class today, but do you want me to just turn this in for right now, and then I'll take my test on Monday? Uh, I, I, don't take, or I don't take late homework or early homework. So you can come to class at 1.30. That's, that's my class. <laughs> yeah. OK. Well, I can't. I can't take your homework. I don't do that. Okay. You have to take the quiz. That's the only way I take the homework. OK. OK. Bronsted-Lowry, our last theory here. Danny, would an acid, according to Bronsted-Lowry, what would you guess? An acid is a species that donates. Yeah, H, because it's acid. Think of acid and H plus. It has to donate those. It has a lot of them to give up. A base, everybody's a species that accepts. Accepts. H. So it's going to accept them. So a base is going to something that will suck up, will react with the acid. React, suck up the H plus. Take it in. Acid is something that donates, gives up H pluses. 
So Braun said Lowry is all about just the, the H pluses. Either you're going to donate an H plus or you're going to accept an H plus. And there's going to be a lot of homework on this. According to Bronsted Lowry, blank acid base pairs differ by the presence of one proton. So they're trying to name this stuff. You have two compounds, all they do is differ by one H plus. They're going to call them what? Anybody know? Conjugates. Conjugates. Yep. They're called conjugates. Okay. So we'll spend most of the day at the boards today, but we'll just get you started here. Identify the conjugate acid-base pairs in the below acid-base reactions. So these are acid-base reactions here. F minus has a conjugate something on the product side. Probably have to be The product side have to be HF. Well, that means these two must be conjugates, too, then. But how do you recognize what's what here? F minus and HF. Which one's the acid? HF. HF. Yeah, it's got the H on it. And what's its conjugate base? It's going to be right conjugate acid HF, conjugate base F minus. Right. So these two are. Notice how they're. It's not just F. You had to lose an H plus, so it's F minus. Right? Think of it as H plus. We don't write them this way. Right. HF equals that, but. If you lose this, all that's left of this is F minus. Okay. Likewise with H2O and H3O plus, which is the conjugate acid? H3, H3. Cause that, you can tell just because it has more hydrogens. So this has to be the acid. This has to be the conjugate base. So do you recognize how the acid went from H3O plus to H2O. You lost an H, but you have to lose an H plus, not just an H. That's why H3O plus went to H2O. So it's pretty much subtract one from the charge. Right. Um, so notice, too, how if, this, if you identify this as a base, this has to be an acid. If you identify one on this side, this is a base. Well, that guy has to be an acid, because bases react with acids. If you identify one of these as a base, well, that means this one has to be an acid. Its conjugate has to be an acid. See how it's all figured out once you figure out one of these? So it's not too bad. So let's go to the boards, and we'll wrap this up today. It won't be too bad. So just do the next one. Identify the conjugate acid-base pairs in B. Acetate and ammonium produce ammonia and acetic acid. Don't let me forget, at the end of the hour, we're going to hand back the exams.
I think everybody pretty much agrees, right? You got the that Vivian's got it too. Yeah, she's you're right, you got it. That's the same thing. You have the base acid, base acid. Everybody agrees, I think. Identify them. This is just a concept and then we'll go on to the next board question, but we're not supposed to be writing H plus. We're supposed to be writing H3O plus. What is that called? You remember what it was called? High hydronium. And but that's a, like a lot of work and we're not going to. We're, we're going to keep writing H plus all the time. But how do you generate H3O plus? If you have a hydrogen in a reaction, oh, don't write H plus. We're supposed to write H3O plus. Pretty much all you do is add water to both sides. Because this is H3O plus, right? You have three hydrogens and an O and a plus. So I wouldn't worry about it. It's just like sig figs. We're not even messing with sig figs anymore, right? So it's just an, 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 something that you should be aware of that this is how they believe protons exist in, in water is H3O plus. Let's try this one. Write the balanced reaction of hydroxide with hydrofluoric acid to form fluoride ion and water. Then identify each species as an acid or a base. Okay. Write the balanced reaction of hydroxide with hydrofluoric acid. form fluoride and water, and then identify the acids, conjugate acid-base pairs. Notice how once you figure out what one thing is, everything else gets fixed. Right? If you call this a base, this has to be an acid. And if hydroxide is a base, its conjugate has to be an acid. What's reacting with it has to be a base. Okay, now it's going to get a little more complicated, but I think we'll get it. Give the conjugate base to each of the following species regarded as acids. So these, they're giving us the conjugate acids. All you do is write the formula, write the chemical formula of the conjugate base. Just write the chemical formula of the conjugate base. So if, it's, if you want to write the formula of a conjugate base, what do you have to remove? H plus. Remove an H plus. Not only remove an H, but remove a positive one from the charge. And if it helps, go ahead and write the reaction. But report only the conjugate base as your answer. Like on the first one. Ooh, good. NO2 minus. Because you can't, th this is just removing an NO, this is just removing an H. Well, you have to remove an H plus, so you have to subtract one. A couple ways to see it. One is you can write the reaction if you want. That has to go to H plus, plus, the charges have to be the same. So this has to be a minus. Or recognize it as H plus. NO2 minus, and we're going to remove this guy. So you have to end up with NO2 minus. So do the same with D. Remove an H plus. Right. Remove an 
h plus. So you should, right? How many h's will you be left with? You'll be left with one h for sure. What will be the charge on this thing? You have to remove a negative. So you so pretty much like look at this one. HNO2 went from zero to a negative one. So you added a negative one to the charge. All right? All right. One of you guys are right. You could do it this way if you want. You could write out the whole thing. That's going to make H plus plus an H ASO4. Now, the charge has to be the same on both sides. Right? This is a negative. So this compound has to have be a negative. What plus a positive 1 would give you a negative 1? Negative 2, right? So the answer is negative 2. Okay. And if it, so if it helps to write out the reaction, go ahead. But pretty much all you're doing every time is ripping off an H and subtracting 1 from the charge. So try it again. Try it again with 32. See if we can get it. Because you're writing the conjugate bases again. Finish it though, because you have to you have to remove an H. So this is right, SEO, but this is a negative. So you're removing an H plus. So you have to remove a negative one charge too. So negative, negative one minus one would be negative two. There you go. So you're doing this right. I think I see a lot of it. SEO negative two. You're on the right track. And the last one is. OCL minus. Perfect. Okay. Same thing, but now we want to give the conjugate acid to these things. Give the conjugate acid. So you have to add an H plus to it. Yeah, you, all you're doing is adding an H, H plus. HCLO. Okay, good. I agree with everybody's HCLO. Now the last one. The last one should be AS with four H's. Is there a charge? You have to add an H plus. So now you have to add a positive 1 to the charge. So it was 0. Add a positive 1. Well, it becomes positive 1. Okay. It would look like ASH3 plus H plus ASH4 plus. Charge has to be the same on both sides. So label, next one, label these guys as an acid or a base and indicate the conjugates.
good. If he's a base, this guy has to be a. Oh, they're going into that. Yeah, because they're conjugates, right? No, 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 hang on, hang on. If he's a base, this has to be an acid, because acid reacts with base. And then this one changes. Yeah, so, this, so that one has to be the base. And you can kind of tell he's got two hydrogens, he only has one. Right? He has two H's, this guy only has one, so he has to be the acid. And he, again, he has more hydrogens than him, so he has to be the acid. Right, that just because the H is going to be acid. Well, no, because there's H's out in front of here, too. Yeah, that's why they're the acid. You, you, you can't tell. So you have to go by which one has more H's. Okay, good. Keep going. Yep. 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 Once you identify one of these, the rest are all fixed. For example, if you recognize this as a base, that means his conjugate has to be an acid, and then the rest is done. If that's a base, this has to be an acid, and this is an acid, that has to be a base. Okay. And you can also tell by the number of hydrogens. The last one you recognize. There's our acid and our base, our base and our acid. Okay? Okay. See if you remember how to do Lewis structures. Lewis structures. This is the only way to illustrate this idea of Lewis acids and bases we need to draw Lewis dot structures. So what we did, if you remember, we counted up the valence electrons, right? surrounded the center atom with the surrounding atoms, made octets on everything. Anything left over, we put on the center atom. So give it a shot. if you remember how to do this. So BF3, boron has three valence. Each fluorine has seven. Three times seven is 21 plus three. So you've got 24 electrons to work with. Twenty-four valence electrons. Fluorine, fluoride, would be 7 plus 1, 8. So once you get all the Lewis dot structures drawn, then we'll see if we can figure out what's a Lewis acid and what's a Lewis base.
So hopefully when you did your boron trifluoride, you had no lone pairs on the boron, right? Don't be tempted to make double bonds because we only do double bonds with CNOS, right? So when you did your boron trifluoride, you're done when you used up all 24 of those valence electrons after you made octets on the fluorine. Did you get your Lewis stuff to look like mine? No double bonds anywhere. Okay, this is the starting point. Make sure we all agree with this. Yeah. All agreed? Okay. Now, if you look at these, if you all agree, look at those reactants. A Lewis base was supposed to do what with electrons? Give them up. Donate them. A Lewis acid is supposed to do what with electrons? Accept them. So take a look at those two reactants and see who's doing what here to make that product. I see what you're saying. Yeah, okay. Yeah. He, so, yeah, this fits into this. Good. So he's the one donating the electrons. Yes. Do you, do you hear Monica's way of explaining this? Or Crystal. Sorry, Crystal. Crystal's way of explaining this? She said that the fluoride fits into the BF3. It's not the other way around. Right? The BF3 didn't fit into the fluoride. So she's saying that the fluoride is donating these electrons to make that bond. Because... He's got the electrons to donate, right? If I kind of circle them for you, let's just pick those. He's going to donate those electrons. So if the fluoride is donating the electrons, that makes the fluoride the, the base. And the Lewis acid would be the dude who accepts the electrons, which is the what compound? The BF3 accepts them. Okay. So very different than what we had before. Because before we had acid-base reaction on both sides. Here, no. Here we're forming a new compound, and they're calling it an acid-base reaction. Okay. Very different. Try this one in 41. We'll do 41, then we'll call it a day. Okay, now, in, in this, do you have a game plan to do this one? We could draw the Lewis dot structures. Uh, yeah. That might help, but how many dots, what does, what's the only thing copper can do? Accept. Copper can only accept electrons. Copper can't donate anymore. So that's kind of the trick to doing 41, is you just look at these guys and you see, well, what the heck can one of these do? And then that'll determine everything else. Copper can only accept electrons. So that means copper must be the, the Lewis acid. Water must be the 
Lewis Bass.